Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, not so retro, but maybe in spirit at least, today we're talking about Power World. Power World has been defined as, since it was first revealed, Pokemon with guns. The question is, could it be more than that? Now, my journey to Power World's early access release, I found quite interesting because I have to admit, artistically, I was pretty turned off by Power World. I didn't find it super inspirational. In fact, I found it less derivative and more like a blatant ripoff with some of the creature designs. I remember in one of the initial trailers I saw with Power World, there was this big sculpture and it was a kind of Lucario looking Pokemon sitting on a throne and I couldn't believe how almost one-to-one -one it was. I know nowadays it's tough to find new creature designs. I mean, just look at modern Pokemon to itself, but you already know here on Retro Rebound, I'm no Pokemon elitist. I prefer the spin-offs to the mainline entries. I was more of a Battle Network kid growing up. So for me, you know, I love the idea of these crazier Pokemon style games. We need more of them. I've been playing a little bit of Temtem. Maybe we'll talk about that at a separate time here on the channel. But I like that there are challengers in this space, but this one to me, I saw guns and I saw a lot of similar creature designs and went, you know what, I, I hope people enjoy it, but I'm not gonna check it out. Well, Early Access has arrived, and in eight hours, the game sold a million copies. It has hundreds of thousands of players on Steam. And I went, okay, day one Game Pass in the Xbox ecosystem. Let's go ahead and check it out, shall we? Especially because I feel like with that Pokemon spirit, it's a really good fit here. And as someone who I know you are aware, I'm not the craziest Pokemon guy. What does this game do? And how did it subvert my expectations? Because Pokemon with guns, it is not just that. It is much more for better or for worse. We'll talk about, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here and you're into nostalgic retrospective or the occasional day one review slash impressions, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. The following video is brought to you by Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is a 4X MMO set in the Star Trek universe, which continues to expand. And as a Star Commander on the edge of civilized space, you can recruit iconic characters from Next Generation, the original series, the J.J. Abrams films, Discovery, and more, including Kirk, Spock, Michael Burnham, Data, and Geordi even. They just added new content from seasons one and two of Next Generation. So you're getting new officers. They're also adding new content like wave missions. They're just always updating the game. It's crazy. You'll be able to build iconic, powerful ships, including the USS Enterprise, and join millions of players online by forging alliances and defeating your enemies together, or even conquering territories, choosing your own faction, exploring new worlds on intergalactic missions. This game has it all. The game's also free. They continue to add to it every month, so you'll never be left bored. Y'all know how much I love sci-fi stuff, so give this one a whirl. Link down below. Make sure to use promo code WARPSPEED while you're at it. Keep in mind that if you use this code, you're gonna get 10 epic shards of Kirk. Shout out to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring today's video. So, Power World, you know, I know all the trailers you saw had like armor and guns and creatures fighting each other. This is a survival game. Didn't expect this at all, by the way, if you could tell how little research I did going into this game. Did not anticipate that I'd be mining for materials and building a camp. And I gotta be honest, when I saw that I hopped in, my eyes rolled immediately. I went, this is the game taking over the industry right now. A survival game. Again, if you enjoy survival, I'm not here to take away your joy. But for me, I had my fill with like the forest in 2012. I'm good now, I'm over survival games, right? But then I caught myself, I said, you know what, Matt? Be open-minded, see what this game can do. There's a reason so many people are playing it where you should at least be able to understand why folks are gravitating towards it. So as you open up, the game has a pretty easy, breezy tutorial that I think guides you well, which is a pro of the game, I feel, especially for me, I haven't played survival games in a while. So it's gonna lead you from one step to the next without any like quest markers, just a little heads up on the UI telling you this is what you need to do next. Level up your base, maybe capture a few pals, do this by leveling up, X, Y, Z. So it guides you in nice and easy. And I didn't really feel the gears start to turn with the game. I went, okay, you know, I'm gonna get my wood, I'm gonna get my stone, I'm gonna get these crystals. I'm gonna build these spheres, which are effectively Pokeballs. I'm gonna catch creatures. Okay, cool, I can get into that rhythm, I guess. It reminds me a bit of Legends Arceus, which is one of my favorite Pokemon games. Like I can get behind just crafting and capturing like that was my favorite part of that game's loop but where it gets really interesting is the base building 
What I like about this game as a survival title is it's less about the decorations and making the biggest base possible, which I fell out of love with after Fallout 4. Like I had my fill there of, oh, big game that's doing one thing over here, being an RPG and a shooter at the same time, is also doing a big kind of Minecraft builder mode. Awesome. I've had my fill with that. So for me, again, this game is fighting this uphill battle of like, what is Pal World doing to win me over? And it's when you start to catch the pals and you go through their skills and you learn each of them are proficient in certain things, whether it be combat or at your base. So it helps to capture multiple of certain pals and you'll bring them back to your base. You'll store them in this like little pal computer thing. Think of it like what you see with the terminals in Pokemon. You're gonna store them in there and then you can assign them to certain tasks. Now, the way the AI works, it's very much like effortless. Like as I'm setting up things to build within my base, you'll see the pals are just running in, taking out their hammers and getting to work. They'll farm materials for you while you're away. So immediately, it didn't feel like I had to build up to it. Like within the first hour, I'm already at this point in the game where my pals are doing a lot of the management at base. I've got to do some things to take care of them. So it reminded me of my Tamagotchi as a kid. I don't know if y'all ever had a Tamagotchi, but for me, I love the Tamagotchi. Uh, for those unaware, it was like this little digital pet you'd have in your pocket. You had to feed it at certain times. It would teach you responsibilities as a kid. Now, when your Tamagotchi died, it was like one of the worst days of your life because you really felt like a failure. But if you reset the battery, I mean, you were good to go. Anyway, this game brings out the, the animal parent in me. I have two dogs. I adore my two little creatures. And so I get to go into this game now. And as I'm building the base and giving them a little, you know, pal bed and making sure they're all well taken care of. They have sanity meters on these creatures. And if you don't take care of them and feed them, uh, they are going to lose their minds. And, and we definitely don't want that here on the, the Maddie Ranch. So naturally, I got pretty into it. I really felt like the base is where things took off. I have to say the UI in particular, I know it's early access, so I'm not gonna go too hard on it. Really ugly and needs some cleaning up because it just feels like when you're, for example, dealing with cold weather conditions and then you notice how strengthened the screen is, like every corner is pasted with text. And I feel like they could do a little bit better with that even in an early access date. So I do hope they target that. But the gameplay flow is pretty good. I mean, I just really enjoyed building out this base. So what happens is as you do pretty much everything in the game from killing pals, which you can kill in this game, all the way to mining resources and everything in between, like building, you're going to level up and earn technology points. Technology points can be spent on new things, new recipes that you can build and unlock. And I really like this system a lot. So I can choose to spend, like you'll level up and get eight technology points and I'll spend these on things like a pal bed, a food bin, a wooden storage crate and some armor. You won't get everything you need off the rip, but you have to really pick and choose the necessities there. Keep in mind, this is my little tip to you, pay attention to the quest log and the early goings because there was one stretch where I needed to level up to unlock more tech points to get to the next step in my quest. And unfortunately I had picked just different skills that had caught my interest at that time. And so it, it kind of halted my progress a little bit, which I think the game expects you to, to follow the guide a, a little bit closer than I had personally anticipated. So what was interesting is this first hour or so, I just spent in this tiny little circle right next to the area I stepped out into the open world. So from there, I was thinking, well, I've spent so long here just working within this small little corner of the map. Let's see what's going on downtown. So I started going beyond my camp. There are fast travel points all throughout the map, so it's really easy to catch some creatures, go back to your base, start assigning them to certain spots, then fast travel back to where you were and get going. So the game flow is great. But as you're out there, I mean, you'll encounter boss-like creatures. There are some seriously dangerous pals out there. I was level seven at one point trying to take on a level 15. I summoned my Lambo, which is this little fluffy, cute pal. And uh, yeah, we got rinsed, we got destroyed. Um, you can catch humans in this game. And when you commit crimes, uh, the, the, the popo will come after you. And that was definitely something I didn't expect. Like I saw the viral video on Twitter of someone catching a human. I went, oh, I wanna try that. And I succeeded. And by the way, it's not this little gimmick thing. Like 
I went back to my base and I put the human down in the base and that dude got to work. And I was like, oh, sick. Like, what, what else can I do now? What I will just warn you of is when I did capture a human, I had a, a wanted charge uh, and they had me tacked for assault. <laughs> and so I was like, well, okay, it's a video game. I'm gonna fast travel back to my base and mind my own business. They followed me there. They followed me there and they took me out and it was uh, okay because then you spawn, you just grab all your loot uh, and that's it. They're not chasing you anymore now that you're dead. Um, there are raids that can happen on your base too. Speaking of enemies following me to my home camp, there are raids that can happen. These kind of uh, Mewtwo looking pals showed up and uh, they were called like annoying fangirls or something like that. Like they have these interesting labels for these raids that happen and so I had all of my pals just slinging attacks and trying to defend the base. So they're like very much multi-purpose here. And, and like I said, they all specialize in different things, which I think makes them really fun to go out and find because some are really good at building. Some have like, I had, a, I think his name is like a chickpea or something like that. He's good at laying eggs and that's good for this like egg incubator that I'm gonna build next. And so. There's a flow and a connection to each of these creatures. Like, it felt like they built the items and then fed the creatures into those so they all have their own distinct purpose within the base. And yeah, eventually the place is running itself and it encourages you to go out and explore some more. And again, there are some big bosses you can take on. And that really is the flow. That is the rhythm of Pal World. In the terms of early access, the only real crazy thing I encountered, I went, that probably shouldn't have worked the way it did. At least to me, felt like when the we'll say police followed me to my base because they just spawned there and they were like level 34. That was it. I mean, I don't mind their level. I, I broke the law, so they're going to take me out. But um, yeah, I think that and the animations need some cleaning up. I don't think they look particularly good, but the catching and resource gathering uh, was pretty easy, especially because you can eventually build multiple bases. So you have your own personal level. When you level up, you can increase stats. There are things like item building speeds that can be increased. Not crazy about this system, but I get why it is the way it is. At first, you'll be confused because there was one point I spent two minutes building something, just holding the X button the whole time. You don't just press it and walk away. You have to hold it the whole time. I'm like, what's going on here? Eventually, once you learn, like your pals help you out, I get the necessity for that stat. So you can level that up, but your base has its own individual level as you complete missions for that base. And it will eventually increase how many pals can help you out around the base and how many bases you can have in general. So you can move beyond where I did, which was like right next to the opening area of the game and start really building out further and going deeper into this world. Uh, in the terms of like story and stuff, I mean, there are NPCs you can bump into. I found a journal at one point along the way in my early goings here. So it's not necessarily like you're gonna have this deep enriching narrative and captivating world, although there is stuff to find there. And just like most of these early access survival games, the story and all the cool presentation will come afterwards and this additive feature and it'll drive new players to the game. I've, I've seen it enough times to know this is probably how it's gonna go, but like mechanically feature wise, this game is pretty sound. I have to say I was pretty impressed with it. Artistically, I'm letting some of my criticism fade to the wayside a bit because I feel like for all it does right, I can accept a couple of Pokemon duplicates. I do hope with future additions of creatures into the world that there are less shameless ripoffs, frankly, because I think the game has an identity of its own and I usually don't profile games that harshly before going in, but I feel like for them, it probably did them a favor when you think of just how well the game is doing now. I mean, a million sales in eight hours, like there's a real hunger, a palpable, tangible hunger for the Pokemon-like games. Uh, look at Temtem and how successful that was off the rip when Sword and Shield came out, which is another one I was playing. And this game slots in really well in doing its own thing. Like you have Temtem, which is this more like 2v2 kind of style Pokemon game. And then there's also quests and whatnot. And then you have here in Power World, more of a crafting survival focus, which I did feel caught off guard by. So overall, yeah, Power World, you know, it's a fun time. And I played it by myself, which was pretty great, I have to say. Uh, there are different difficulties that you can tweak before going in. You can even customize the settings down to like how the capture rate goes. Like you can really fine tune your session. So it's definitely gonna be fun with friends. You can of course play online with friends and invite them to your server. 
I have a primarily single player friend group. So for me, it was one of those situations where I went, I don't trust y'all. We're dropping this game in like a day. I know I want to check this out for an extensive period of time. So I'm going to start up my own world and not wait for y'all and see when you want to come and dip your toe in the water, see how it is. So for me, as someone who played it in single player, I found it kind of captivating. I think some of the early crafting, building grinds maybe would have been subdued if I had a friend alongside me, I will say that. But the fact that it's in Game Pass, maybe you won't have that problem if you want to play it with someone because you can just suggest to them, hey, go get in Game Pass and they'll download it and boom, there it is. So yeah, like I said, Power World, uh, better than I was expecting, much more addicting than I was expecting. And I found myself, I knew I was enjoying it when I stepped away and I was still kind of thinking about it on how I wanted to progress building my base, what pals I could possibly find in this world, what features and what skills they have. It's awesome. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, those are my thoughts on Power World. I'm looking forward to seeing yours down below. Have you picked it up? Are you trying in Game Pass? Let me know. Other than that, take great care of yourselves and I will see you on the next Retro Rebound. Peace.